אז אני הולכת עכשיו להזמין לבמה אישה שאי אפשר אפילו לאמוד את כמות העשייה שלה. אז ליאת אהרונסון. שלום לכולם, אני ברשותכם אדבר באנגלית כי יש לי פה אורחים מאיטליה. מרקו, קרלוטה, And so I'm Yath Allenson, I run the Zell Entrepreneurship Program and uh, the Adelson School of Entrepreneurship with uh, the Dean uh, Yehir Talman here. And I'm going to talk about something probably a little bit less emotional and um, not quite as daring as mountain climbing, but something that will maybe take you to think about something um, for the future, something that's going to happen not only in exponential growth of technologies like we've been hearing today, but about exponential organizations. So what is an exponential organization? It's an organization that there are more and more of today that are growing at even um, at the same rate as their customer acquisition. An example of that is Airbnb, another one is Uber, and we're going to talk a little bit about Quirky in a second. But this is a new kind of organization, and I had um, the privilege of spending a week at Singularity University um, in, uh, at the NASA base in uh, Northern California. And in the executive program there, um, I met uh, Salim Ismail, who came out with a book called Exponen Exponential Organizations. He then uh, brought a group of people together from all over the world, graduates from the executive program and also the summer program, and uh, we became kind of ambassadors for this uh, new outlook or new um, look at organizations. And so in that sense, um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about something of that today that will hope hopefully you'll be able to take and think about for the organizations that maybe you'll be creating. So the attributes of an exponential organization are that first and foremost, it's rapid organizational growth. So 10x growth, this is something that's huge. Airbnb is obviously a great example of that. Today they have more hotel rooms than the Hyatt Regency um, chain of hotels, and they don't have a physical building yet. So totally exponential growth. Also, a, dis a total disrupt of an industry. And one of the things that's very, very um, attributable to exponential organizations is the fact that they are on an open platform. An example of that is something like Twitter as well, and as well as um, Airbnb. And also that there is rapid, rapid, rapid customer growth. So in the past, a workflow used to be take an idea, develop a concept, get funding for it, then start manufacturing it, and marketing it, and hopefully you either get gold or kind of bust. It was an all or nothing kind of uh, a situation. And today, many, many things are impacting that. One of that is the fact that internet and smartphone pro proliferation. Um, another issue is crowdfunding or the ability to be able to put something out there and to have people have a look at it and decide if they want to buy into it and actually invest in creating it before it's created. Another thing that's impacted that in the technology range is the single card computing. So it's made prototyping so much easier and so much cheaper. <coughs> and what's so attractive about crowdfunding? For many, many um, startup ideas, not only hardware, also software, but mainly for hardware innovation. It's an idea to, it's a way to market the idea. It's a way to put it out there and let people know that you're working on it. It also reduces the risk because if you're not able to get it funded, probably there's a problem with the demand side and then maybe it shouldn't be funded, maybe you shouldn't get the money out for it. Um, you get a lot of iteration and very, very quick feedback on the products themselves. And of course, at the end of the day, it's validation. And to the extent that you're able to do something about and raise money through crowdfunding and be able to develop the product through the iteration stages, you're probably able to raise um, funds. And we've had many examples of that, which I'll talk about in a second. And so, in a sense, it's a way to kind of weed out the bad ideas from the good ideas and try to come up with those ideas that actually have some market marketable merit. Of course, there's some exceptions to this. Um, I don't know if any of you know this. This is a, um, a band called uh, the Animana Gucci, and um, they wanted to send a pizza to space uh, through crowdfunding. So not all of the ideas are so good. Um, but in general, if you think about it, this is kind of an only the strong survive. 
So only the strong survive. I mean, you have to be able to raise money in order to create your product. And I've, um, I'm kind of like a, I guess a Kickstarter Indiegogo junkie, and I've bought many, many products. Um, not all of them have actually uh, come to successful completion, um, but I have gotten a few. I've actually never gotten a product on time. Um, it's uh, always somehow delayed from the date that it was supposed to come. But you know, I'm an early adopter, it's kind of fun, I get to uh, try this out. It's almost like gambling, but you kind of usually always win, and even if you don't win, you get your money back. So it's kind of like a healthy kind of gambling. But really. The strong survive, and you get to see how this is weeded out. And it's not only weeded out by the the um, the way the product is built, but also the way that it's marketed. So you need to be talented at marketing and getting out there in the first place. If you just build a great product, that's not good enough. And I think any entrepreneur knows that building that is just not enough. So Kano Computing, it's a Zell graduate um, that's come out um, from uh, from Zell. They're now in London, and they did a Kickstarter camp campaign at the time. Um, they went out to try to raise hundred thousand dollars, but raised a uh, million dollars. Um, Form Labs, another Zell graduate for 3D computers um, printers that um, are desktop size. Um, there's of course the famous hoverboard, super super cool. And those are just examples of the way that this technology or this platform has enabled many, many people to be able to create incredible things. But what if we take it a step further and look at an organization, um, for example, called Quirky, that takes this kind of idea of innovation and building things that the market wants in order to take it to the next level and the organization itself is exponential. And what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, it was founded by um, a serial entrepreneur at 22 years old. Um, ben Kaufman um, is uh, now 25, so um, $16.7 million in, by the third year of operations. Unbelievable. And what they do is they go through a process where you submit an idea. Anyone can submit an idea. You can submit an idea. All kinds of innovators can submit an idea. Um, the crowd kind of helps uh, decide. You help decide. Um, how you want it, what color you want it, how you want it done. You work with their engineers if they choose you. Quirky builds it and then they sell it. And the idea here, and that's what the exponential organizations takes this as one of the examples, is that exponential organizations are organizations that are building and growing like their customer base. Ben Kaufman has said that, um, why would I, the hell would I have the next thing? I'm good. And if you look at it, what the Quirky Expo organization is, is rapid customer um, acquisition, disrupting the industry, um, very rapid organizational scale, and it is a platform. It is a platform for innovators to be able to put their ideas out there. The company milestones are incredible. It was founded in 2009, um, revenues by 2011. They formed an incredible partnership with GE, which I'm going to talk about in a second, and raised $185 million um, by 2014. This is company is going somewhere. And the partnership with GE is something to think about because GE now has put out a whole line of products that instead of having their engineers try to think up what people want, they actually look out into the crowd and say, what do people want? People want all kinds of incredible innovation that wouldn't never have gotten to GE without this kind of a platform. So that's kind of food for thought. Um, I think the sky's the limit. Thank you very, very much.